everybody, let's learn some irregular verbs. Go, take, take, took, took, taken, taken, shake, shake, shook, shook, shaken, shaken. Are you having fun? No. Would you have more fun if I hit you with my hand? <laughs> uh, this is my hand, my third hand. I have another idea. Maybe a little bit more fun way to learn the regular verbs. You want to try? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Let's try it. The microphone I take, took, taken. You shake, shook, shaken. Wake, woke, woke into the style I'm creating. Think, thought, thought. Seek, sought, sought. Listen to the lesson that I teach, talk, talk. Don't sleep, slept, slept. I creep, crept, crept. I sneak, snuck, snuck up. You leap, left, left. I keep, kept, kept. Having fun, I'm never beat, beat, beaten. I win, won, won. Do, did, done. Begin, begin, begun. Shoot, shot, shot. No, I don't own a gun. I All right, yeah, let's just, let's just get going with this. Cool. Okay, so, yeah. Hi, Jason. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Great. Um, I got a first question for you here. Um, first, very simple. Can you introduce yourself and tell us three interesting facts about yourself? Sure. <laughs> uh, so my name is Jason R. Levine, uh, but most people know me as Fluent CMC. That's the name I use uh, for the songs and videos I make for language learners and language teachers to use with language learners. And I live in Paris, France. But I'm originally from, from the U.S. I've uh, got a lovely wife and two children here. And mainly what I do is, uh, besides making songs and videos, uh, I go to middle schools, high schools, sometimes universities as well, and do two things. Either I, uh, I'm there to do a student workshop where I perform the songs that I've written uh, with the students at the school. And... Uh, the other thing I do is uh, teacher development workshops, training uh, at schools and also online. One more thing I do <laughs> yeah. is, is I uh, have an online uh, English practice program focusing on uh, speaking practice. It's called the Weekly English Workout. So I work with students around the world who uh, joined my program. And I just published a activity book for teachers to use in the classroom with my, with my songs and videos. So I do, I do work online and also uh, going to different schools to, to do workshops. Okay, great. And what's this activity book? The activity book is, um, you know, so I, I, I've been really fortunate to um, reach a lot of students and, uh, through their teachers who've used my videos from YouTube in their classroom. Uh, but I also have uh, teachers who've contacted me uh, wanting something more structured. So I made a book that has uh, ideas for what teachers can do with 12 of my most popular songs and videos, and they can get the book um, as a PDF download. And there also is also a media pack with song downloads. They can get MP3 songs and um, a private area on my website where they can work with me uh, with the videos. Do you have any quirky, quirky or interesting things about maybe where you grew up or anything like that? I worked at the fish market. Uh, I worked in the music business in New York City. Uh, yeah. And let me see one more. Uh, I was in a PhD program in psychology. Wow. Okay. Those are interesting. <laughs> a lot of different things. So those are three things that I've done that I, I hope would be interesting to your listeners. That is interesting. Definitely. Um, my next question is related to what you've just said, is um, how did you get into using hip-hop in your classes? Well, <clears throat> um, like many teachers, especially language teachers, uh, uh, English language teachers in particular, I think, uh, I used music almost right away when I started teaching, and that was uh, back in 1998. Um, and they're obvious you know, benefits to using music in, in teaching and uh, learning. Uh, so I started bringing hip hop songs in because my students were curious about hip hop. I was teaching in New York City where hip hop began. And, you know, internationally, hip hop is known everywhere, really. And there's not just known, but every country, um, there are young people who are involved in the culture. 
So uh, the last piece of that is that I grew up with the music and I'm a hip hop DJ. Mm -hmm. So they were curious also because their teacher was uh, in the culture. Uh, so I started using hip hop songs that were out there already to talk about the culture and the US and the language. But I started writing my own songs when it became clear that there were some problems with using hip hop in the classroom. <laughs> uh, the, first, the first one is that you know, the songs are often very difficult to understand, even for people you know, who are, their first language is English. If they didn't grow up with the culture, they don't, they don't know the dialect. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that as interesting as it was for the students and for me to talk about those songs, the language in the songs is not the language that they need the most practice with so that's why I started making my own songs, and I made them with hip hop. You know, if I if I grew up, if I'd grown up, you know, playing acoustic guitar or jazz piano, I would have done it that way. But you know, because hip hop is what I did, um, and, and then I realized as I went that there also is an advantage of uh, doing it with the hip hop style. You know, it's such a rhythmic music. It's you know the most rhythmic mm -hmm. of all. So so it's more like teaching conversation. And once you start controlling for, you know, the content, like I was as an English teacher, then you've got the best of both worlds. Right. You've got, you've got the language they need to repeat in uh, a way that is going to prepare them better for listening and speaking in, in conversation. Cool. So it was like a natural marriage of your social life or your spare time and your, your work. Exactly. Cool. That's a great way to put it. Yes. Cool. Okay. Um, your viral video, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the verb one, verb two, verb three rap, uh, why do you think so many people liked that? Why do you think that video appealed to so many people? What, what yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think, um, I think it's because everybody you know, recognizes the importance of, of, no, of learning irregular verbs, but I think it's also you know, the novelty of, of a teacher getting up and, and, and doing um, uh, the way I'm doing it. But then also maybe because it's a, you know, a student made the video on their camera, a lot of, of videos that are, you wouldn't think would be popular because they're not slickly produced are actually become, you know, more viral. So it was very natural. It was, you know, it was a very, it wasn't a, something we set up to do so much. It was something we were doing in class already and a student wanted to film it. So we made okay. it. So yeah, the reality TV vibe about it. Exactly. It looks like you do a lot of traveling. You travel a lot for your workshops. Um, have you got any cool stories from any of your travels? Any travel stories? Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of a lot of great stories of of, of students uh, from different countries uh, telling me how how it's helped them. Uh, I guess I the, the the one story that comes to mind. That, that was really crazy was I was in a um, very small town in uh, Reggio Calabria in Italy and it was really late at night and I was walking to a hotel from the train station I got in really late and I heard uh, someone say English teacher English teacher <laughs> I was on a small street it was really dark and uh, it was very strange I looked and there's a girl uh, like 13 years old with her head out of a taxi cab. <laughs> no. And I thought, is she trying to get me to come in this taxi? And I went over, her mother was driving the cab. Her mother was a cab driver. That's already kind of unusual in Italy to have a, a woman driving the cab. So her mom's driving the cab and this, this girl who could barely speak English uh, recognized me from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that, that's the great thing about having a viral video, I guess. Yeah, the recognition. <laughs> cool, okay. Um, you're all about motivation, seems to be your main thing. Absolutely. Um, can you give our readers three tips for what to do when they feel like they're losing their motivation? For, for me, uh, I see learning a language as learning about the language, practicing the language, and using the language. So learning about the language is, you know, studying grammar, uh, you know, looking at some meme on Facebook that talks about the difference between fun and funny or countable and uncountable or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, and learning about a language is important, but that's usually what we do most, spend most of our time on. And then we try to jump from that to using. 
which is going out and you know in the real world or even in the classroom doing some kind of communicative activity that requires confidence motivation and the only way to be confident and motivated in an activity like this in the classroom or in the real world with a conversation partner at a job I think is if you feel uh, confident enough that you your your accuracy and fluency is at a level that you know you you're, you're uh, enjoying using the language and you're not feeling ashamed and, and stressed and embarrassed and most people uh, do not get enough practice that middle piece uh, in order to go from learning about the language to use it so they may be able to you know, get a perfect score on a quiz about the present perfect, but they're not using the present perfect with accuracy and fluency. And that's because they're not getting enough repetitive exposure and practice. And <clears throat> if you don't get enough repetition with what you're learning about, you're not going to remember it. You're not going to use it with accuracy. Uh, you're not going to have the confidence to have it come out. So, and, and you'll lose motivation as well. Okay. Uh, so you're in a vicious, a vicious circle. So, so I feel, you know, one reason for this is that, you know, repetitive practice can be very boring. Traditional, you know, repetitive practice. Uh, but there are ways of getting repetitive practice that are actually really fun and interesting and natural. And songs are the most uh, powerful, in, in my opinion. I mentioned earlier that you would, even if you, you know, enjoy a magazine article that has great target language in it that you want to use in real life, you're not going to read that article 15 times. The truth is that if you really wanted to use what's in that magazine article, in that book, you're going to have to get repetitive exposure. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, uh, find things you, you like to repeat, you know, videos, scenes, uh, play games in English, and the more that you repeat with materials like this, the more likely that language is going to stick and you'll be able to use it. And as a result, you're going to feel much more motivated. The main tip would be finding something you are happy to repeat. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then you everything still else. Still it down to that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So one of the, also you, one of your slogans like on your site is uh, relax, repeat, and remember. Um, yeah. Relaxing. One piece of advice for relaxing. To me, to me relaxation includes you know, being entertained, being interested. So it's that, you know, finding something you like to repeat, meaning mm. you're interested in it, you feel relaxed. So I don't, I don't mean you have to be relaxed uh, in, in some special way. I mean more that you're enjoying, you're enjoying it, you're doing it, not because somebody told you you had to for homework, you know, you're not stressed. Mm. So that's what I mean by relax. If you're in a state where, you know, you're, you're, you're into what you're doing, especially if you don't look at it as work, mm. uh, and you repeat that, uh, then you will remember so everything seems to come back to this idea of repeating something that you enjoy. Yes. I guess if we can condense the advice in this interview to one sentence, that could be it, right? That is absolutely Repeat something you enjoy. That's right. Two more questions. Sure. First one, uh, do you have any plans for the future? What are, what are your plans for the future? Well, I would... Um... This year, I'd like to focus as much as I can on, on doing workshops in schools in France and Belgium, so I'm closer to home, uh, but I would like to travel. I'm, I'm hoping to go to a few places during the year. Uh, I'd, this year and beyond, i uh, like to build more relationships with teachers and schools through uh, the songs and videos I'm making this book I mentioned earlier to try to get my materials into more schools uh, around the world and also to, to do more online. Great. Cool. Okay. Fantastic. And the last question. If you could go back in time to any period, when would you go? Ooh. Any when period in history go? at any all? Any period in history at all. Mm. Wow. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm a... I'm a big hip hop person, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, this is this is a very I mean, I mean, I can think of times in ancient history that would be really cool to go back to. But I, I have to say, and maybe I'm thinking about this right now, especially because I'm watching uh, the Get Down, which is a, a Netflix uh, series about the beginnings of hip hop in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. But I would like to go back to you know the early '70s, 
in New York City. Uh, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm also thinking about things like, you know, ancient Egypt right now. But anyway, <laughs> I'd like to go back to the, that time uh, to, to be there when all of it was starting to happen and gel and move from, from funk and disco into hip hop when it was all being created. I think that, that would be pretty cool. I thought that might be your answer. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> yeah, great. All right. Well, thanks a lot. All right. Well, thank great. you, Nick. Nice to meet you, man. Take care. Take care. Oh, all right. All right. Bye. Please don't freeze froze frozen when I speak spoke spoken. It's real. You can feel I don't steal stole stolen. I choose chose chose.